Hello everyone, it's time uh, for our lesson number 10. So let us go ahead and get started. Um, as usual, again, I need to always remind you to uh, take a few moments to read the disclaimer and uh, refresh your memory as to the key points in it. All right, today we have two key items that we're going to focus on on our agenda for the day. Uh, the first part of our discussion, we're going to take a look at the open relative to the prior day's range. And then the second uh, part of our discussion, we're going to get into looking at market control. Who's controlling the market, why that's important, and how we can tell who's in control and how that is really very significant for uh, information for us as traders. Uh, let's begin by taking a look at the open and the prior day's range. Before we take a look at the open vis-a-vis -vis the prior day's range, let me just review briefly with you and sort of put in context what we have been doing over the past few lessons. When, when you use the market profile, in many ways, it's like working with a puzzle. You have many different pieces that you are trying to put together to form a clear picture of what's going on in the market. And the more, the more pieces that you assemble and put together, the clearer the picture becomes. So what we have been doing is really looking at the different pieces of the puzzle, and now we're starting to assemble the pieces together to get a good view of what the picture is going to look like for each trading day. As you develop this skill, one, you begin to recognize the power and the effectiveness of the profile, and two, the more profitable a trader you become, because once you have that clear picture as to what is going on in the market at the present, and you are able to move with the market, the way that it wants to move, this is really the best way to trade and to make money in the market. Uh, you never want to be on the wrong side of the market. So what we're always trying to do is to put the different pieces together so we can interpret and understand where the market is, what the market is doing, and where it's going. So let's review this process together again. It begins really with taking a look at the overall context first. So we always need to take a look at the greater time frame, the weekly, the monthly, and sort of that is our large context where we're working. Then we work our way down. And before the day begins or before the day even opens, the first thing that we want to look at is often what we call the opening call. The opening call is really the sentiment before the market opens where do the traders think the market is going to open. And you can always really take a uh, look at what is happening before the market opens and where the trading is taking place to determine what that opening call is. That one is reasonably easy to, uh, to discern or to find out. Then the next piece in the puzzle that comes is we have to look at the actual open. When the market actually opens, where does it open relative to the prior day? And there are a variety of different points where the open could occur, and that's what we've been studying in the previous, in the past lessons. Uh, the open, certainly, we talked about it if it occurs within the value area. Uh, we talked about it if it's outside the value area. Um, today, we're going to take another close look at the open vis-a-vis -vis the actual range. Uh, so it is a little bit broader uh, area of price that we're looking at in terms of the prior day, and we're going to take a look at what does it tell us if we open inside or outside of the prior day's range. Once we establish the piece of the puzzle that tells us uh, information from the actual open based on the, where the market actually opens, the next piece of the puzzle that we begin to take a look at is the time frame activity, meaning 
which of the key time frame participants is most active in the market, who's in control of the market, and where do they want to take the market. That's, that's the next piece of the puzzle. The, the piece that follows that is, well, with what level of conviction? All right, we're able now to identify who is really in control and what they're trying to do, but with what level of conviction? Uh, are they trying to do this? Are they really putting uh, their full weight behind the move? Or uh, is it sort of a half-hearted um, step? Now, let's take a look more closely at the open. And I'm going to begin taking a look with you at the open when it occurs outside of value, but within the range of the prior day. An open that is outside the prior day's range or the prior day's value area but still within range indicates a market that is slightly out of balance. All right, so this is the first key thing we need to understand. If in fact the open price is outside value but within range, it is telling us a very important message. The market is slightly out of balance. Now, what happens when the market is out of balance? That's typically when we get a move in the market, when we get a directional move. However, simply just because it opens um, outside, the, the, the open price is just outside of value, does not necessarily mean that we are going to get a, uh, a move. Th this often will result in a value that may actually overlap the prior day's range to one side. Uh, but the key point is we are a little bit away from value so things may change over the course of the day. So the next key question that we have to ask ourselves when price opens away from value or outside of value but within the range, the key question that we want to ask ourselves is will the prior va day's value be accepted or is it going to get rejected? So what is the market sentiment at this point? We're opening outside of value. So we know that we are out of balance. Now, are the traders going to push the market back into the value area and uh, still stay in this value? Or does this mean that the other time frame trader has stepped into the market and in fact, the old value that we had on the prior day um, is now changing and we are going to see a move to a new uh, value area in the market. Let's begin with the first scenario. If in fact the market continues to accept the prior day's value, what is likely to happen and how can we tell that? The new day's value area will overlap the prior day's value area to one side. So basically now what we see is even though we started out opening outside of value, we start to see prices move back into value of the prior day. The, the, the market really still is not ready to move away from the prior day's value. So what we find is we have acceptance. Now the new day's range will begin to extend beyond the prior day's high or low. Um, so it won't just, since, since we've opened away from value, we won't deviate very far. We will extend back a little bit into um, the high or the low, depending on which end of the range we ended up opening at. And we will begin to move from there. This knowledge is really very important and very helpful for us very early on in the day because it really helps us in identifying the new day's extreme. And as we mentioned in our last lesson, being able to identify the high or the low for the day is very, very helpful. So if in fact, let's say, and I will give you an example in a moment, I open outside of range, I am at the lower end of the range, and then prices move back up into the value area, but don't move in uh, far uh, too far into the value area and start moving back again to the lower side. 
it becomes easy for me to identify that in fact that was the high of the day. Let's take a look at an example together and it'll make uh, these points that I'm making more evident or more clear. So let's begin first by identifying the value area for the prior day and you see the uh, red arrow here uh, indicates the prior day's value area. But what we're talking about really is not the value area. What we want to look at more closely is the actual day's range. And the day's range is all the way from the high all the way down to the low. Now let's take a look at the new day. Where does it open? And notice it opens right here. So it's outside of the value. There's my low value area. I am below it. However, I am still within the blue line, which is really the prior day's range. So what I've just witnessed is an open that is outside of value area, but within range. And in this case, what we had happen is acceptance. Take a look at what happened with prices. Prices did not want to move away from the prior day's value area. This was the prior day's value area right here. And prices dipped up just a tad lower and then started moving back in the direction of the prior day's value. So what we had is a continued acceptance of the prior day's value area. Um, we, even though the market opened up uh, indicating that there's a slight imbalance, nevertheless the market went back to balance itself. And then what we see is certainly prices overlap, so we traded here in the same area of the prior day's value area and then exceeded it a little bit back up uh, to the upside. So this is an example where we get uh, the acceptance. Even though we open outside of the range, we come back to trade in the day's range. The, days, the prior day's range really was not rejected on this particular day. So even though it opens outside of value, we have to wait to see how things develop in the market. And uh, back to the point that I was trying to make earlier, in terms of being able to determine whether it was accepted or rejected and identifying the extreme, because of the fact that prices didn't continue to move any lower and we had acceptance, if you take a look at the initial balance period, A and B, you can now see that it was really evident we put in the low of the day. We put in the low, prices were accepted, and look at C period, it started to move higher, and we continued to move higher uh, within the prior day's range. Now, when the market opens, we want to watch which direction price begins to move in. It gives us an idea about the market sentiment. Is it going to accept or reject? And very quickly, if you take a look at A period, look at how many prints we have above the open towards value. So right away, very early on, you get a clear signal or a clear indication we are heading uh, towards the prior day's value. We, we see that we have acceptance and not rejection. And then all of a sudden, B period opens and B period dips lower. However, it doesn't drop below the low of A period. Once again, this is telling us that we have support at this level and that uh, sentiment is going to push us more towards the prior day's value than away from it. And sure enough, we see that this is how the market continues to develop. And by the end of B period, it really becomes quite evident for us that we've put in the low for the day. And now once, with, once you have this information, uh, early on after the first hour of trading, you can comfortably trade, uh, take some longs as the day develops, knowing that this is the low for the day that you've identified. Uh, now, 
quite often you will find that this will uh, continue to play out. Uh, prices will move a little bit higher and extend beyond the value of the prior day. But you're not going to see a very large uh, move beyond the prior day's range. Because again, what we're noticing or what we've identified is that the prior day's value was accepted. Just traders still feel comfortable within the, these price levels. So we're not really looking for a very dramatic or a very large move. Now, it is also very nice for us to be able to identify this extreme early on because we've also learned from prior lessons that we can do our projection and we can in fact calculate where we would expect the day's range to end. And remember, what we do is we take the low and the high and we calculate the range for the prior day and basically we take this number and add it to the new low that we've identified, the extreme here, and this gives us the projection for the day. And take a look. If we, in fact, had made that projection and we knew that we had the low um, down here and, and we traded with this knowledge, we really have a lot of opportunities during the day that we can then begin to capitalize on. Now, notice again the overlapping value areas. Um, we have the value area for the prior day over here. That's the high and the low. Now, look at the new day's value area. All right. And if we were to identify the overlap, it's right there. There's the overlap. Okay. All right. So whenever you have a scenario of acceptance, this is what is going to occur. Prices will move back into the prior day's range, and you're going to get an overlap. Uh, you're going to be able to identify the low, and you're going to project, be able to project the day's range. If you follow this step-by-step -step sort of analytical process and you get accustomed to it, you will become a very, very proficient trader. All right. Now I covered one scenario of the two. Even though we opened within the range of the prior day, the market doesn't necessarily always accept uh, the, the prior day's value and take us back into the prior day's value. We could, in fact, get a completely different scenario because, remember, the fact that it is opening outside of the value area of the prior day is signaling that we are slightly out of balance. And typically, when we are out of balance, these are the periods where we could experience potential market moves. So now we're going to take a look at the other scenario. Uh, if, in fact, the market decides that it is going to reject uh, the prior day's value and move in a different direction. So what we're going to see happen is the market is going to break out beyond the extreme of the prior day. And as we emphasized before, the market is out of balance and a potential market move is possible. And these moves are usually the ones that can result in uh, significant profit if you are able to capture and trade them effectively. So we're going to take a close look at one together. All right, so let's begin again by reviewing uh, what we are looking at, and we begin by identifying the prior day's value area. And we should also note where the range is for the prior day. And here is the range for the prior day. Okay, the range is always, uh, all, the range usually, uh, in comp well, the range always has to be larger than the value area. There are times when, in fact, the range and the value area are exactly one and the same and uh, those are what we call non-trend uh, days. But in any event, uh, we've identified the value area and we've identified the range for the prior day. Now let let's take a look together at where we open. Once again, we open down here. So note, we are within the range, 
we are within the prior day's range, but we are outside the value, below the value area. Now, let's take a look at what happened in this case. The market decided to, when it opened up, uh, if I were to ask you, what kind, just looking at A period, what type of an open this was, it would be simply an open test drive. So it tested two prints below the open and continued upwards back again towards value. What happens though is we find that it didn't quite penetrate too far into value. A period just barely made it into the value. Then B period opens up here and so we're a little bit deeper into the value area. But nevertheless, what happens with B period is it starts dropping back. If you notice, we never actually penetrate beyond about one half of this value area. So we come up to about half of it, and then prices start to change direction and move in the opposite direction. So what was interesting here is the beginning of the day seemed to indicate that we, we were getting acceptance but as the day continued to develop, the other time frame traders stepped in and all of a sudden the day's value area was rejected and we started to move in a completely different direction. So note the open again, outside of the value area, but in the range. And we get rejection right here. One key uh, point that I always want you to identify, of course, in addition to the point of control, is the half point. The, the POC is not always at the midpoint of a value area. However, you can easily calculate the midpoint of a value area because that often becomes a testing point for value. If, in fact, you see that prices are struggling and not able to penetrate half of the value area, that often can be a clue that the market is, in fact, starting to reject that value area and things may change uh, to a different direction. Always keep an eye on those mid-levels. The mid-level for the day, the mid-level for a value area, uh, the mid-level of the initial balance, because, if you will, these are tipping points. Uh, are we able to uh, go to the other side of the half, or does the half really limit us and prevent us from moving any further? All right, so when we open, let's review, when we open outside of range, when the market opens outside of the prior day's range, the market is out of balance. And we have two possibilities to consider when that occurs. One, we, we are going to get acceptance. Uh, the market will accept the breakout away from value and will continue to drive in the direction of the breakout, or we could in fact get rejection and the market will auction back and forth to a new price level. Now, in both A and B situations, as long as price does not return to the previous day's range, the market has accepted the uh, the breakout. Now I'm going to give you an example in a moment. Um, I want to share with you that uh, uh, what I call a trading tip that the greatest imbalance and opportunity occur in the first scenario that we talked about, uh, the one where in fact when the market opens outside the previous day's range and continues in the direction of the breakout. This is initiative activity uh, that is started by the other time frame trader. Uh, in other words, we are no longer interested in that, um, in that prior value and we are going to see ourselves move in a new direction. And since we're already starting at one extreme of the range and we continue, what if we if we don't see any uh, movement back towards the prior day's value area, expect to see a strong move uh, in the new breakout direction. 
if in fact the market open, opens um, outside the prior day's range and is rejected back into the range, the potential for a dynamic price move in the opposite direction of the opening break is set in motion. Now, the best way really to see some of these things is to take a look at an example together. So our first scenario that we looked at was when we open within the range. The second scenario that we want to look at is we are going to look at an open outside the range. So let's take a look together here at the prior day and we have value area, okay? And then we also have the range for the prior day. What's happening here is the open is outside the range. Take a look, we're way outside of the range. But what happens is we actually reject this move. The move does not continue on the move starts to want to move back towards the value area of the prior day. So this is not the scenario where we get a nice explosive move that's quite profitable. This is the scenario where in fact we reject this new uh, level and prices want to move back, they're more comfortable towards this value area and sure this is what happens and you can usually detect it for fairly early on in the day. You open, you get the test drive, it tests, rejects, and then continues on downward. Look what happens with B period, it continues to move lower, and C period even lower, E period lower, and then we're starting to come back up again and retest later in the day. But the general sentiment really is we've rejected trying to move completely away or too far from value, we are more comfortable towards the prior day's value and therefore we tend to come back towards this uh, area. All right. Now, one of the key things that we're always looking at, regardless of, uh, well not regardless, but in addition to looking at where the market opens, we want to identify who's in control in the market. And we've already learned that we have two key participants in the market. We have the other time frame trader and we have the short time frame trader. A very important and a very big piece of the puzzle is for us to be able to identify which of these two key market participants is the one that is going to be in control of the market. And we should certainly know by now uh, that it is the other time frame participant that is behind all of the major moves in the market. So it behooves me whenever I can identify that this key player is the one that's in control, I want to be riding their coattails. I always want to be trading in the same direction as they are. I want you to always think of the uh, market as a very dynamic arena, if you will. A dynamic arena where the other time frame buyers and sellers are competing. They're really always battling for control. And our job is to determine which of these two guys or which of these two parties is the one that dominates and is control is in control of the market. Now we know that if in fact the buyer is in control, prices will rise. If the seller is in fact in control, prices will drop. So this is all very basic, very fundamental information. It should be second nature. However, the hard part or the tricky part is how do we know who's in control? And that's really the key question that we want to focus on. And we need to really be able to develop the skill in identifying who's in control. Is it 
the other time frame buyer or is it the other time frame seller? And you need to be aware that there are two competing forces. The next piece of the uh, equation, if you will, or the next thing that we want to focus on once we're able to identify who's in control is we also need to be able to identify when this control may be weakening or reversing. Because neither one of those two participants is ever in control forever of the market. At some point they weaken and the other side takes over. And so these are two very important skills that we're going to focus on and I will show you how you will be able to identify who's in control and also points when their control becomes weakened. Now we know we want to identify who's in control so we can be trading with them and use the power of their momentum to help push our trades and, and uh, bring us profit. At the same time, when the market begins to uh, weaken in, in one direction or one of these participants who's in control has started to withdraw from, from the market, I really also want to be on top of that so I don't just sit in the trade. One, I, I would want to take my profits and uh, step out or perhaps it may be time for me to change direction and start moving in a new direction with the new party that's in control. So when you think of control, I want you to think of two key things. One, who's in control? How do we identify the who question? And then the second corollary or the second part of that and how do I know when the control is weakening? All right. Now, it is also noteworthy to mention that there are times in the market when nobody is in control. Neither the seller or the buyer are really interested in complete control. And those markets usually are fairly easy to spot. They're not that difficult. What you're going to find is price is going to fluctuate up and down and as one side pulls away and rests the other side sort of asserts itself and then uh, it pulls back and starts to rest. Usually in these markets this is the type of a market where scalpers thrive and again the short-term trader really becomes the one that's most active. You don't really see major moves and uh, you're, you're not going to see a lot of directional conviction. So just as you have to be able to identify who's in control, you also need to be able to identify when nobody is in control. We are going to talk, uh, in the context of the control, we are going to talk about two types of markets. There is what we call a one time frame market and we, what we call a two time frame market. Let's begin first our focus on the one time frame market. The one time frame market is when only one participant is in control. All right, so if we're talking about a single time frame market, that means right away that we have one participant that is dominant that is controlling the market. The one time frame market or a single time frame market is basically a primary characteristic of a trend day. And one of the key skills I would really like you to develop is the ability to identify trend days and learn how to trade them. So we're going to look at one together and uh, certainly we're going to look at more examples but because there is so much uh, profit to be made when we get a trend day uh, in either direction, it is really helpful to be able to identify these early on and be able to uh, get in on the trade quickly uh, with a trend day and, and have the trend day uh, sort of carry you to some significant profit. Now, when we get, interestingly enough, a non-trend day, it is the market is also in the control or in the hands of only one participant and that is the local or the short-term trader. So 
this is kind of interesting, so uh, uh, bear with me. When we have a single party controlling, it could be the other time frame buyer, it could be the other time frame seller. And if either one of those is the one that's in control, we are going to see significant move, a significant uh, directional move in the market, and that is what we call a trend day. It may be an uptrend or a downtrend, and the trend day is a function of the dominance of just one single party throughout the day, and that party will either be a buyer or a seller. So this is the first parameter or the first definition of a single time frame market. Interestingly enough, the second definition of a single time frame market is also a market where the locals or the short time tra uh, short term traders are the ones that are in control and we lump those two together as as one category and usually this gives us a non trend day so if we were to summarize just because we have a single time frame market doesn't mean it's a trending market it could in fact be a trend day and it could also be a non trend day all right, let's now focus our attention to the trend day. Since we've already established that there is uh, quite a, a profit potential to be had on any trend day, we need to learn about these uh, particular opportunities. We need to be able to identify them early and certainly uh, trade them efficiently. All right, when we talk about a trend day, again, I'm going to give you two types of trend days that could occur and the profile identifies those beautifully for us, but it doesn't identify them very early for us. As they develop, we can begin to see which type of a trend day uh, we have. The first type, and this is the, the more profitable of the two, is what we call a standard trend day. And this is a pure directional day. The, the one time frame uh, dominant force is really taking the market, moving it strongly in one direction, be it up or down, and you get a standard trend day. And I will share with you the characteristics of that. But uh, before we do that, let's talk just briefly about a double distribution trend day. A double distribution trend day is another type of trend day where we do get a directional move as well in the market, but it is not with the same level of conviction. We begin first by really uh, non-trending, if you will, and then all of a sudden, the other time frame uh, participant dominates the market. We have a breakout, and it begins to move uh, in a specific direction, and then it gets to another level, and it, once again, it halts and begins to distribute around that level. That's why we call it a double distribution, because we end up having two distributions during the day. Let's talk a little bit more now about our standard trend day. First of all, you have a very high degree of directional confidence. Remember, the key behind a trend day is that one party is dominant, be it the buyer or the seller, but they are the dominant party. They are in control all day. They are in charge. They're the ones pushing the market in this particular direction. So a trend con continues to attract new business to the market. What happens uh, when, when you get this kind of conviction and uh, you have one, one time frame trader that is in control, many professionals immediately pick up on that, as you will. You will see how easy it is in just a couple of minutes. It is not that hard to identify a trend day. Um, as a matter of fact, this is one of the magnificent uh, things about the profile. It really helps identify for you the type of day very early on. Now, as the trend day continues to attract new business to the market, you will find that a characteristic of trend days, you're going to have higher volume. Everybody wants a piece of the action. As people begin to see prices moving in a uh, strong direction, they want to move with it. And so everybody and their cousin 
once they recognize the trend, uh, starts to come in and participate in the market. So we see higher volume. The key point will always be when do you get in on the trend. And this is also a function of how early you're able to identify that trend. And already, believe it or not, you have a very big piece of the puzzle. You know how to identify a strong conviction in, at the open from the onset. We've already talked about the open drive and the open test drive. So if you're going to get a trend day, it is going to open with an open drive or an open test drive. So that's the first indication. Before anyone else, you are able during the A period to already begin to see, do I have that main piece of the puzzle? Do I have directional conviction right at the open? Is this open an actual open drive or is it an open test drive? And of course the open drive is the one with a higher degree of conviction. But both of them begin to indicate uh, that we may have a trend day. Certainly, as I was saying earlier, this is one piece of the puzzle. And then you need a couple of other pieces, also uh, the context. Uh, also, where is this open relative to the prior day's value, where, relative to the prior day's range, relative to the prior day's high, and so on. So all these different pieces together come to play in helping you identify early on is this likely to be a trend day or not. Now, another telltale sign is the other time frame control is evident very early in the day. And how is this evident? Several ways. But first and foremost, it is really evident in the volume. You will find that you will have a lot of volume right at the open quite often and uh, very heavy trading from the onset. Uh, this gives you another clue with an open drive. Also, the speed by which you will see prices move from the open to about uh, one half of the range of the prior day. It'll shoot like a rocket. So all of these elements together, as you observe them, you begin to collect the pieces of the puzzle that begin to show you that we may in fact have a trend day on our hands. Another telltale sign, each period as it develops will have a higher high and a higher low. And we will take a look at all this together. Now, to re-emphasize, trend days offer traders some of the best trading opportunities. So if you want to really begin by focusing on where you're going to get the best trading opportunities, trend days, they don't happen all that often, but when they do, they are wonderful and very easy to trade. So it is important for us to learn how to quickly identify whether the other time frame seller or buyer is in control. Now, the buyer, of course, if the buyer is in control, the prices are going to go up. If, in fact, the seller is in control, the prices are going to drop. It's, it's a, either an uptrend or a downtrend. And you always, as a goal, you always want to position yourself with the side in control. And the corollary to that is you have to be very careful if you're on the wrong side because losses can quickly mount if you are on the wrong side of the market. So if you make the wrong call, make sure you're out of the market very, very quickly. But as you will see, it really is not that hard uh, to make the correct call when you have the profile on your side. It's almost too easy. Okay, so let's take a look at a trend day together and I will show you how easy it really is to identify them. And the first telltale sign that we talked about is the open test drive. So take a look at this. Um, the market opens, drops three prints below the open, and then has a strong drive in the up direction. Now, look at the next telltale sign if you're waiting for the initial uh, balance to develop before you want to act. Take a look at another very important characteristic of a trend day, a very wide initial range. 
relative to the other days, you will always find that trend days will have a very wide initial range. And this is sort of good and bad. It's good in that it makes it very easy to identify trend days. It's bad because most of the move, if you notice, this is almost about half of the move for the entire day was made during that first hour. So if you're not able to get in and cash on it fairly early, you could miss, miss quite a bit of this move. Certainly, uh, if you weren't able to identify it early enough and you enter a little bit late in the game, let's say at C period, you still have ample opportunity to make money. This is the beauty of a trend day. But nevertheless, I want to show you how you can capitalize on it very early on. All right, another uh, common uh, trait or characteristic of the trend day is the higher highs and the higher lows. And this is very easy. Look at period A, here's the low, here's the high. Look at period B, here's the low, here's the high. Period C, here's the low, here's the high. Higher highs and higher lows. But now, let me help you become even more sophisticated so you can begin to learn to identify these moves earlier and earlier. And this is sort of the key. This is the edge that we have as profile traders. We're able to see and do things before the vast majority of other traders can. Okay. Telltale sign. Take a look at B column. How deep was it able to penetrate into the A period? Remember the half point that I told you about? Did it even make it to about half? No. Uh, this goes to show you the strength of the, trend, of the trend. The deeper it's able to penetrate into A, the weaker the control of that dominant party, the less conviction. If, in fact, B period just sort of backs into two prints of A and continues on higher, that's even stronger, greater conviction in the market. So you always want to be looking at one column relative to the other and compare the level of penetration back into the prior uh, into the prior period. So everyone else may be looking at higher highs and higher lows. You're going to be a little bit more sophisticated than that. Not just is this a higher low, but what was the level of penetration back into price? Now, what does this tell us? It tells us as prices dropped back, this dominant force in the market decided that this was a steal, I'm not going to allow any uh, any selling uh, really at lower prices. I'm going to pick up everything I can and they aggressively picked up any anything that every, anybody was trying to sell. But here they let the prices drop up to almost half but not quite. So they were aggressive but not as extremely ag aggressive as sometimes buyer can be, buyers can be. So uh, think of it um, as, as the market comes back in price, how eager are the buyers to pick it back up and take it higher. Uh, and by the way, this is part of their strategy. As some are taking profits, the other time frame trader is accumulating. So they're saying, okay, fine, I'm going to pull back and I'm not going to buy at this uh, point. Let, go, let, I'll let you sell to me for a while and then I pick it up here and then I'm going to add a little bit more buying force to it and I'm going to take it higher. So you continually have this dynamic back and forth between the buyers and sellers. So now take a look with me and I will show you how you can begin to see when the trend is also weakening. Remember we had two key things that we wanted to be able to identify. The first was who's in control and it's obviously very easy and obvious who's in control here, the other time frame buyer. And the second part of the question, how do we tell when their control is weakening? This penetration skill that I was telling. Now take a look here. H period actually went higher just two prints above G. And when we came back, uh, we came back to just about half, which has been consistent throughout the day. However, once I period came along, take a look at what happened. It was the first time that we actually had a 
lower high, and then when we penetrated, we actually went lower than H. So we had a lower low. So that's the first indication the trend is weakening. Now, you could, in fact, and it did happen in this case, all of the sudden see prices, uh, if you stick it out, come back and end up higher again to test. What's happening here, what you're seeing here, is really the amateurs, not the pros at work. They're always the ones that come late to the party. And they start buying here, hoping to take prices higher. But it's not the other time frame trader. And I'll give you another clue, another very important one. These are sort of what I call the gold nuggets. Take a look at the number of prints that we're starting to get at a price level. 1G, 2H, 3I, 4J, 5K, 6L, 7M. So we had seven prints at this price. What that is telling you as a, hopefully, a seasoned profile reader now, you've got seven prints at a price. What you have is distribution. You don't have a directional move anymore. And sure enough, if you look at the volume, take a look at the shape of this volume. We're beginning to distribute here. We found balance. When you begin to see five or more TPOs begin to develop, that move is at its end. You are now distributing. You are no longer in a directional market. And the only way uh, you are able to discern this is if, in fact, you are a profile user. And not only that, uh, not just a profile user, a profile user that knows about this. And guess what? A very small part of profile users actually know these little, what I call, gold nuggets. So imagine now, everyone else is thinking, wow, we had one heck of a bullish day and prices here. Look at where we ended up at the high. The amateurs come in, man, I'm going to buy tomorrow. This thing is going to skyrocket. But you, as a profile trader, look at this and say, wow, I've got seven prints. I'm starting to distribute. Nope, the market is at balance at this point. We need to wait and see what is going to happen. Is The market has accepted this level now. I don't have an imbalance. Uh, it is likely that we're going to continue in this area, and possibly we may even on the next day begin to see a retest or a rejection of this. But certainly, I would not become gung-ho. And this is what you always hear about people sort of buying at the high and getting cream and losing money because they don't understand how to interpret what's happening in the market. Now you do. You have this valuable insight. All right, let's continue on. And let's take a look at how we actually want to trade a trend day. We want to put into action some of these concepts that we're looking at. And so before I even look at the open, I want to take a look at the context of the trade. So I want to look at the bigger picture, what's been happening in the market before I actually look at the open itself. Now notice some of the things that we have been talking about and discussing. Prior day's range, we already know as soon as the market opens that it's, it's opening outside of the prior day's range. Okay. Now that in itself as a profile trader already tells me something. The market is out of balance. And what we just got done discussing together today is now the key question I want to ask, is the market going to reject this or is the market going to accept this? And immediately I take a look. How many prints did I have below the open? Only two. All right, I'm opening outside of range. I only get two prints below and one heck of a test drive. All right, it looks like we're going to have a trend day on our hands. We certainly didn't move back towards the old value area. We're moving in this direction. I'd be in this market as soon as I can. But I'm going to even show you uh, more refined skills in terms of how we are going to determine our entry. So simply based on our analysis, it would give me reason to get aggressive. Um, and to want to be in on this market, there's a high probability of a trend day very early on. And I know this because of what? Looking at the context, I am outside of range, I have a, an open test drive, and prices did not fall back towards 
uh, uh, towards the prior day's range. So there are a lot of things that are telling me this is before anybody else has, has begun to identify that we have a trend day. I know that we have a great potential for a trend day. So I could get aggressive and enter. But I have an even more refined tool. And let me show you how you can really tell as a seasoned profile trader when exactly to enter the market. We are going to take a look now at the footprint. And this footprint that I have here is really A period. Okay, So the market opens right here. And so this is the open that we're looking at. And take a look at what is happening in terms of bid and ask and volume. First of all, the numbers are fairly high. 8,500 at bid, 6,411. And then I begin to see prices increasing. Prices start to increase as we open. But all of a sudden, I begin to see heavy selling. Take a look here now. The bid is actually starting to exceed 20,000, 15,000, 9,900, 5,290. This, folks, this is very large volume on both sides. So what I'm seeing is heavy selling. But look at what is actually happening after this heavy selling. Prices are moving up. So obviously, someone is buying. Give me all you got. If you want to sell, I'm buying. So there, there's a very strong buyer in the market. When you see a patch of red like this, very high in volume, and then you begin to see prices continue higher, this is a clear indication that there is a buyer in control during this period. All right. Now, never will you see a market that will just shoot up and continue higher and higher and higher. So this is your first telltale sign. So if you wanted to enter the market, when you see this red patch and then you begin to see the volume build up uh, green above it with high volume, you could enter at any point here and you are fairly uh, safe in the early uh, stages of the trade. However, if you want it to become even more seasoned and a bargain buyer, another gold nugget I'm going to give you here. Whenever you get a 30-minute period that has over 15 or 16 different prints, as this one does, uh, if you count them, you'll find that you have about 17 or 18, price is always going to come back and test the penetration. This is what the professionals want to do. Okay, Mr. Buyer, how much are you willing to buy? How, what is the level of your conviction? So the other time seller says, here, have some more. I, I, and sure enough, they're selling to them. All right, and if you notice, they're picking up everything they're selling, and as a penetration, I never make it to half. So you could conceivably, once you see this big column develop, say, okay, I'm going to wait and see when it comes back to test, and I'm going to pick up right here around half. Sometimes it never makes it to the half, so you have to be careful depending on the conviction of this other time frame uh, trader. So if you see the prices come back to test, you may want to pick it up right at the testing level on this next period, on the B period. But rest assured, anytime you have 17, 18 prints in a 30-minute period, prices are going to come back and test. So you always have an opportunity to pick it up. This is what the, the professionals will do. And notice what they're doing here. It looks like you have a lot of selling, but what's happening is accumulation. Uh, they're really, OK, sell to us as much as you want. We're going to buy, and sure enough, they buy and take it even higher and higher. So with these tools, you're able to get into the trade with a lot of insight, a lot of information that no one really else sees, and also at a very nice, comfortable point. And then you could always, if in fact you are mistaken, the worst case scenario is put your stop loss at the low of the day, and this would be your exposure. But when you consider the exposure relative to the potential explosive return of a trend day, the expo exposure really is not that bad. And you're, you're relying on all of these powerful tools. So it really, you know, it, it's not as, as bad an expo it's not an exposure at all. You, you see what's happening in the market before your eyes. All right. So 
um, as as now now we've decided that we're always going to look at our trades from the perspective of a professional so we need to always be able to identify the different elements of the trade that we want we did the uh, analysis the context and how to get and time our entry and we talked about our stop now we want to identify our targets our first target is going to probably be the high uh, range, uh, range or the uh, high of the initial balance of this day here this number this would be my first uh, target but here's another tool that we have to help us identify our target we want to calculate the range for the prior day and let me show you how we can also do projections for trend days remember once you have the full range also calculate the half and the quarter range and then here's how you develop your targets comfortably you sh on a trend day you should be able to get half range above the open so put the open plus half range and that will be your first target target to open plus full range and that'll be 130150 third target prior days high plus two full range if, if we really get an explosive move you're going to get twice the full range of the prior day but instead of using the open I want you to use the prior days high and I'll show you why in just one second here take a look when we opened we opened already above the high of the prior day this is part of the move we can't neglect this we can't ignore this so that's why when we want to take the maximum levels we don't base them on the open or the low of this day we base them on the high the full move because rarely will you see a day that will be twice the full range of the other day more than that uh, if we take the calculation from the open but in fact a trend day could easily be twice the range of the prior day but from the high or from the close of the prior day so this is why for my third target I had to drop back to this level to calculate uh, from here plus two full range and if you actually look at what happened in the market the market did what we anticipated it would do and hit every single one of those numbers like clockwork and that's the beauty of a trend day now watch how the market is developing also look at the volume as it develops in that early period that's a lot of volume look at the P period coming back down to test as I told you and then it continues higher moving uh, higher the C period comes back to test in B but also continues higher Right. every single one of the targets that we projected in this trade were hit and the beauty of it is if you also use our dynamic stop system strategy that we talked about in one of our prior lessons at some point you are in this trend uh, with no risk whatsoever after you've taken your first target and you move your stop up you're really in safe territory you're not going to lose any money you only have an opportunity to gain and this is a beautiful way to trade conservatively and it allows you to allow your winners to run rather than trying to uh, just grab a little bit of profit and dash out now look at what's happening at the top here as a profile trader again look at the buildup of TPOs that I was telling you about as you begin to see more than five TPOs develop we have distribution in the market the trend is really at, at minimum weakening and it could conceivably also be ending all right just a few words about the double distribution trend day uh, today we will talk more about it uh, in some of our other lessons the double distribution trend day is uh, relatively inactive during the first few hours of the day you you really begin to see distribution during the early part of the day there's a low level of conviction and a narrow initial base and a very small initial balance uh, since this is the other type of the trend day I just wanted to introduce you to it briefly and make you aware of what it looks like uh, later in the same session the other time frame trader decides to step in and substantially extends the range that's why we have a, a trend day 
uh, we do get a movement, but it doesn't happen immediately uh, from the beginning of the day and continues throughout the day. We get a distribution and then uh, uh, a lull, and then all of a sudden we see a break and prices shoot in a direction. Um, so the late entry of the um, other time frame participant, uh, th their late entry is what drives the prices. The day does not have the same level of conviction as a standard day, as a standard trend day. And double distribution trend days are definitely trickier uh, to trade than the standard uh, trend days. Here's what the double distribution looks like. Now notice how I have a distribution here and then the market drops and I have another distribution here. Uh, once again, in this case, the, the, the market was moving lower on this day, but here I start with a small distribution, I get a single print, I move up, and then I get another distribution here. So we do get a minor directional move. Remember, the conviction just isn't there, but you get two double distributions or you get two distributions uh, during the same day. Uh, last but not least, I just want to uh, talk a little bit briefly about non-trend days and perhaps the important thing is to be able to identify them because they are usually indicative of a move to come. Even though there are times when the market is in balance, what we know is the market always moves when it, from, from balance to imbalance and back to balance. So we just have to prepare ourselves for the move when it comes. Uh, Non-trend days, really, there is no directional conviction, no directional conviction at all. Uh, they often occur before the release of major economic events, numbers, news, and sometimes before the holidays or during the holidays. Market participants are basically just balancing their positions uh, in expectation of a market reaction during these days. So you don't see much of a move at all. Trade is not being facilitated in one direction or the other. There's little market activity and no confidence in the market. The non-trend day open uh, starts with a day that looks like it might be a trend. So you often see an open drive or an open test drive. And this is often intentional by the, the professional traders to try to deceive many of the amateurs. So you will often see an open drive or an open test drive, and then you will just watch it fizzle. And you can often tell, because as a profile trader now, you will not only look, is it an open drive or an open test drive, but you will look at it in context. Where did it open relative to the prior day's uh, range, value, and so on. Uh, you will also get a very narrow initial range when you get these non-trend uh, days. So take a look here just at a quick example of a non-trend day. Uh, sure enough, we have an open test drive. And take a look at that. Just three prints, and then, wow, we shoot up higher. But look at what ends up. It's just a normal distribution and a uh, very uh, small initial balance and an even smaller val value area. That's typical of uh, non-trend days, a very narrow uh, trading range. So don't be deceived if you see an open test drive. It does not always mean that it, there is directional conviction. We have, a uh, uh, again, just a small balanced profile there. All right. Um, time for us now to conclude, and I will just conclude with this note. Um, we are also now going to begin talking about two time frame markets when we have both participants participating in the market. And these two time frame markets require skill and patience, and it is difficult to identify in those markets who is in control.